Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! In this episode of Tropical Valley Park, we are creating an aviary for Microraptors. To be honest, I was the most excited for Microraptors when they were announced to be part of Alpha edition of Prehistoric Kingdom, because I was super excited to include an aviary in my park. I mean, we are not very used to the aviaries in games like this, I mean, we didn't have aviaries in Zoo Tycoon 2, we don't have them in Planet Zoo, uh, we didn't have them for long in Jurassic World Evolution, they were added in one of their updates, but this one wasn't a customizable one, just as the one that we have in Prehistoric Kingdom, so yeah, I'm super excited to include an aviary in my park with an actual birds or dinosaurs and I knew that I wanted to build a very special aviary for them. In Prehistoric Kingdom you can actually choose whether you want to use the default uh, shell of the aviary that is already in the game, right now we only have one shell or you can actually use like null shell or null barrier for the ivory and do it completely by yourself, which I really really love. You can also choose some default options for the interior of the ivory or you can decorate it yourself, which is also very very cool. Today I decided to do it completely by myself, so I chose the null options as you can see. There are only those two dead trees, I mean the branches that you cannot delay, but they really fit to my project at the end, so I don't mind them at all. I knew that I wanted to build an actual aviary for them. I saw many uh, videos here on YouTube by other creators who decided to build more like houses for them. I mean the houses that guests walk in and uh, you can see the Microraptors either through the glass or through the chain link pieces or they even uh, made some walkthrough houses or walk through aviaries. But I wanted to go for a typical zoo aviary. I also thought that letting guests inside of it would be a bit dangerous to actual guests because those are little predators and I wasn't sure how they will act when their actual guests are inside of their cage. So I didn't want to risk it and I went for an option where the guests can only see them from outside of the chain link pieces. We are building this park in Tropical Valley, so I figured out that the temperatures are rather high in here, so we don't need to build any house or any, you know, closed space for them when we can control the temperature. The normal traditional uh, ivory would be just enough for them, because I think that they wouldn't mind the weather that we have in this biome. I also wanted to use new uh, chain link pieces that we got with one of the updates for the alpha. I think that they are really really cool. I will be playing with them a lot in this build. Honestly this is something that I'm missing a lot in Planet Zoo so I hope that they will be added at some point because it gives you so many opportunities to build and I also have problems how to make Habitats for animals that are, you know, climbers or they're jumping high without building actual wall that has 4 meters because normally in zoos they'll have some netting above or chain link above to prevent animals from escaping and we are currently not able to build something like this in Planet Zoo unless you use, you know, ropes or uh, some materials like this but yeah, I would love to have chain link pieces in Planet Zoo. So I am very grateful to the Prehistoric Kingdom team for adding them to this game. As I said, there will be a lot of them in this build. And I also love the fact that if you scale a chain link object, the mesh, I mean like the spaces between the actual wires that the chain link is made from, are always the same size, so even if 
you are, you know, uh, making it smaller, they're not becoming smaller as well. So uh, it's really easy to, you know, make very detailed builds with them because uh, you can scale scale this piece and, you know, fill in the gaps without worrying that, you know, they'll be, they will be looking any different. So yeah, this is a very important little detail that wasn't missed and I am so glad because thanks to this I was basically able to build something like this. Before building this aviary I did a little research online, I was going through a uh, lot of uh, eagle aviaries in the zoos around the world and I found a really nice aviary for golden eagles in zoo in Sofia, Bulgaria. It has this large round concrete circle in the middle and the rest of it is like connected to the circle in very nice angles. So I wanted to go for something like this. Of course, I will put the link down in the description uh, if you want to see how this actual aviary looks like. Uh, of course, it isn't, you know, actual recreation. I was just inspired by it and how was it was built. I wanted to give Microraptors a bit more space that the eagles in Sofia actually have because I knew I wanted to add a lot of them in here. Of course, let's face it, they wouldn't use it because they are still sticking to those two trees that will be actually in this small aviary that is default to the game. I mean, even if you choose not to include the boundaries of the aviary, they wouldn't leave and stay within those, you know, invisible boundaries of the aviary. So unfortunately they won't be able to use the entire uh, ivory that I've built for them. So we have to use a bit of imagination in here. In two of those aviaries I included those feeding stations for them. So uh, let's imagine that those Microraptors are just staying near the food uh, bowls, food stations, because they are hungry and they wait for their, their turn to, you know, fly and land in this uh, feeder. It would actually be very cool if they could use this entire space, but I totally get why it isn't possible. I think that Creating something like this in this game would be very hard, very difficult. So yeah, I don't mind them, you know, uh, staying in this one place all the time and, you know, having those animations that actually repeat from time to time. They are basically on the loop, but uh, this loop is rather long, so you actually don't realize it after you just stare at them for longer periods of time, so it is also really, really nice. I love seeing all those smaller dinosaurs and animals, prehistoric animals in a dinosaur game because we are not really used to them too much. I mean, for example, in Jurassic World Evolution, of course, we got Trodon at some point, but those are mostly those large, you know, iconic dinosaurs and not all of them were so large, so getting to know smaller species and learning something about them is very cool and I hope that we will get more of those very small animals in the full release of this game. Okay, and while I am putting some finishing touches to this aviary, I think that it is perfect time for our fun facts! If you've seen my previous video, you probably know that in every video I try to give you guys some fun facts about an animal or a dinosaur that we are currently adding to our park. So today's fun facts are about a Microraptor. The Microraptor was discovered in China and it lived 120 million years ago. It was about 3 feet long from tail to nose. Its name means small hunter or thief. Scientists had suspected that many dinosaurs had feathers, but the Microraptor fossils have been found with fossilized feathers confirming that idea. Feathers covered the Microraptor's body and the animal even had feathers on its legs and feet. It is believed that the Microraptor had actually four wings, 
because the feathers on its legs also served as an additional pair of wings. Scientists however think that it probably couldn't soar in the sky like modern birds, but that it could glide from the tree branch to tree branch. It had large eye sockets, which means it had probably a very good sight. The Microraptor fossils contain preserved color cells. Scientists were able to determine that the Microraptor had shiny black feathers like a modern crow. They also discovered undigested food among the dinosaur's bones. And thanks to this we know that the Microraptor was a carnivore and it ate all kinds of things lizards, fish, insects and birds. It had a long tail for balance, free claws and a retractable killer claw. It was the smallest of all discovered meat-eating dinosaurs, it weighed less than a pound. And now you probably understand why I didn't uh, decide to make this aviary a walkthrough for guests. The Microraptor had claws, it had a retractable killer claw, it was a carnivore, so I wouldn't risk it. It would actually be like, you know, letting the gas go into the cage of eagle or any other bird of prey. I think that those birds would be actually very scared of the gas and if they feel threatened, they would potentially attack them. So walk through ivories with birds of prey are not very popular i haven't heard of any of them so building something like this for microraptor also didn't feel right to me now i am creating this background from the rocks uh, i wanted to you know create the background for this aviary but also a place where the uh, microraptors could build their nests I'm not sure if they build their nests in the trees, uh, you know, in the branches or in the rock formations, but let's pretend that they would actually uh, make the nests in there. Don't quote me on that because I am totally guessing right now, but I thought if not for the nests, it would look very, very cool to have some kind of background in this aviary. They could always, you know, climb it, sit there, have some, you know, additional sitting space. I also figured out that even though we don't have any staff or keepers in this game right now, but if we had them, they should have some access to this aviary to go in, give the raptors some food or maintain this habitat, clean it, clean it. So that's why I added those doors. Uh, to it just you know for the sake of realism because the stuff simply needs to have access inside of it. In a second I will add some details to this aviary I mean there will be some of those uh, you know small rocks there will be a lot of foliage uh, I kept the foliage rather you know uh, close to the ground uh, so the guests can see the raptors. Uh, I also added a lot of those dead trees and branches so that they have other places they can sit. Of course, as I told you before, they won't use them, but let's imagine that they would. Uh, so I wanted to give them a lot of, you know, places and opportunities to climb, to fly around. There will be some trees inside of this habitat, but they will be very small so that those animals have more place to fly around this aviary. This is also where the scaling options got very, very useful because I was able to, you know, make those very big trees smaller so that they would fit in this aviary and not clip through the uh, chain link pieces. So I was very glad that I had this tool because I could make those huge trees very small uh, so they are more like shrubs or bushes inside of this habitat and it looks very, very cool in the end. After finishing the interior of this aviary, I will also add additional fans for the guests. 
to prevent them from, you know, sticking their fingers inside of this aviary because basically those small uh, Microraptors could potentially bite them. So to prevent any harm to the gas, I decided to add this, you know, uh, very nice glass uh, fans that we have in the game. I think that it looks very nice and it doesn't like affect the view for the Microraptors where guests are watching them even if they for example you know fly or land very close to the, uh, to the net they will still be able to see them. Okay guys this is all that I have for you today. Please enjoy the rest of this speed build and stay till the end because there'll be some cinematic shots where you'll be able to see the Microraptors in their aviary. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to see me build habitats for Lambertosaurus and T-Rex because those are two dinosaurs that basically are left for our park. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Comment down below if you enjoyed this video or if you have any recommendations for my future videos. Thank you guys for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!